<laughs> yes. So I am Margarita Crystal Lotus, and I have a wonderful, beautiful lady from Italy. Would you like to present yourself, Heidi? I would like to present myself. I am Heidi Hörnlein, and I live in Italy, as <laughs> you already said. And I am a coach, a relationship coach, transformational coach. Uh, before, I was a voice therapist. Yeah. And I still work a little bit with the voice, and I think our topic today will be about the voice. Yeah. Uh, but normally now I work with men and women who are unsatisfied in their relationships and who would, yeah. would like to, to get better relationships or to find a new relationship. All so right. mm -hmm. this is so my how main... How long time have you been doing this? What? How long time have you been doing it? The voice uh, thing? Yeah. Or, or the, the other. The voice, I mean, I was a singer from almost all the time. I mean, I sang in choirs and so on. And then I started singing with about, when I was about 24. Yeah. And then I went in professional choirs. And then I went in to Italy to study Italian opera and as you see I still am here. Wow. I studied Italian opera but I really never entered into the circuit because it's yeah. a little bit tricky and I was not so 100% convinced that I would keep up with the rhythm people have, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so how, I, has, how has that helped you in your relationships uh, coaching? You know, Actually, at the moment, I'm not yet really uh, integrating these two things. Uh -huh. I'm trying to integrate it. And, you know, when we have topics like how to find your authentic voice, for instance, yes. uh, normally people understand this is your authentic voice in, you know, outside in the world and so on. But it's actually not only that, because if you want to be heard, with what you have to say in the yeah. world, you yeah. need also an adapted voice. When you, for instance, talk about very important things, you know, very deep things, and you have a voice like this, nobody yeah. would ever believe you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I see. That's very amazing that you have this background because your topic today, what's your topic of your, what we're going to talk about today? Uh, my topic would be how to find or dig out your authentic voice. Right, yeah. So, uh, uh, how, how, this topic is amazing and I'm so glad that, that we can do this interview today and um, I'm sure many, many people who is listening to this really want to know how to find their authentic voice. So let me start with the first question, and that is, how did you find your authentic voice? Yeah, it was a long process because when I was singing already as a professionalist for concerts and in the, in the choir, I was not really convinced that this was my voice with which I was singing. You know, when there was an orchestra, people said they couldn't hear me. So, well, is this really my voice? And I felt more potential inside. And this was the reason why I went to Italy, because I thought with Italian opera, I will find the voice. And actually, it was a little bit better when I took lessons, but I found my authentic voice, my real physical authentic voice, when I stopped everything, every teaching, and I really worked for myself. I tried out and uh, did sounds, for instance, made sounds, and then I thought, this one was okay, and the next one was not okay. Oh, yeah. what is the difference? And so I found out what the difference is, and I found out how I must feel in myself, how I must be aligned with my body and so on, yeah. to yeah. create the right sound. And yeah. I was quite surprised because uh, 
uh, it really worked well. And when once I went, you know, before my doctors, my throat doctors said I had a very delicate um, vocal cords and so on. And after I've done my own research process, I happened to go to another one here in Italy, and he said, "Oh." Many people in the profession would be happy to have so strong vocal cords as you have. <laughs> so this was one of my, um, how do you say, confirmations that the path I was on was right. Yeah. And then I began to teach, yeah. and I found out that 99% of the people got better with the way I offered to them. You know, and it was a really exciting time. I did it for 20 years, yeah. and you know. Then I stopped because I'm a little bit like this when I know how things work and now I really do know how voices work and how to yeah. get them out of people. I get a little bit bored. It's not so interesting anymore. <laughs> so what makes your work today interesting for you? My work today is interesting for me because it's all about relationship. There was a big part in my life which already had to be Resolved, and this was the relationship issue, you know, because I was married uh, twice, another non marriage but long term relationship, and all went down the, down the river <laughs> because I couldn't stand, stay there anymore. It was just not for me, and I wondered, ha, huh, what is it with me, you know? And so um, I thought I need to dig deeper, and so I came uh, to learn a lot of things. And I did coaches trainings and so on, and now I'm much more inside of this topic. First of all, I have found the real partner for me, finally. Okay. After so many years. Yeah. We almost had lost my, my, my confidence that I ever would find any partner anymore in my life. Yeah. yeah. And then I find out that these tools I have used myself are very helpful to the others. So at the moment I am working on this, helping people to to clear up themselves inside and to be ready for love and to attract the right partner or to get better their present relationships. But my goal is one day to unite these two things, you know. To yeah, so how how would you do that? How would you Let's say if you combine your authentic voice in your relationship, does the relationship come forth? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think the new way of relating, which I am experimenting with my husband, yeah. is really that everybody stands in his or her authentic voice. Yeah. That means uh, mainly to stand for oneself you know, and express oneself and not to hide away, shy away and so on, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I try to convince him to do a little bit of voice training <laughs> or two because the, you are really authentic. People uh, undervalued, underestimate the fact that the voice is a sort of business card. This is really a big factor. Oh, of first that's and amazing. I've never thought about this. That your voice is like a like a a, a business card. Ah, that's really cool. Yeah. I will remember that. So how do you, know, you how do you use your voice as a a business card? Can can you share some ideas about that? You know, I know how I use my voice quite uh, con consciously. So yeah. when I, for instance, do a meditation, I will have another voice. When I'm anxious, I will have another voice. When I'm quiet, I will have another voice. And I can also, like actors do, I could sort of um, get the appropriate voice for the situation, but not mechanically. It goes all through emotions. When I yeah. am a certain set of emotion, then the voice comes out in the certain way, you know, which is appropriate. But if you don't have liberated your voice before from all these impediments, this, uh -huh, uh, you know, yeah. constrictions in the, oh, yeah. in the throat, and if it, the voice is not connected with your body, mm -hmm. you cannot really do that because the voice doesn't respond automatically. We have lost the direct contact with our voice, you know, by 
by sitting too much, by talking low, when you talk all the time like this, yeah. you know, all yeah. energy goes away and there's no connection. So people, for instance, like in Italy, the Neapolitanians who always shout and whenever they talk, they talk in such a way, they never have <laughs> lost their voice. <laughs> you know, they maintain yeah. their voice, but no, we, we Northern Europeans, Americans who have learned to calm down and be quiet, we have yeah. lost this natural contact with the voice. And when we try to be to talk in a you know bigger volume, then <laughs> nothing comes out, you know, oh. or shout <laughs> uh, uh, voices uh, sounds which are not very nice to hear. Right. Or people get uh, hoarse in their throat and so on. So the thing is to come to your authentic voice is really to like in many things, also in the relationship work, to clear out the obstacles so that the voice can show up by itself and follow by itself the inner movement, the emotions and what you intend to do, you know? Yeah. And I mean in the relationship work it's the same. You have to uh -huh. clear out the, the blocks uh -huh. for to be able to really enter into an authentic relationship. If so you are honey, still how, how, would you, how would you begin, like when you see a person for the first time, what, what, would, what would you do with that person to, to start that process? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's much more easy in person. For instance, here on Skype uh, or, or Google Hangout would be a little bit different. Uh, so I still have to figure out how really to do it because I first we talk logically and then when I make them just make a sound they don't have to sing because many people have such a fear they have to sing to sing and then they close up and then nothing comes out anymore so we are working just on normal sounds which come out you know even something like this you know I say please <laughs> out uh, this is Mark so, 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 so do, do this process with me just just give me some example and I'll, I'll, I'll follow you see what see how it's like. Okay. You just make whatever sound you like okay <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Something like that? Something like that. And now do a stable sound on one pitch. Uh, In this very moment, I would come on your back and put my hand against your back and ask yeah. you to lean towards me. I'm leaning you, towards you. Yes. Yeah, you must feel have your something hand. which you really feel behind and your, yeah. on your back. Yeah, you know, I have that. I have that. Push against that while you do the sound. Okay. okay. Uh, and now push it. Push more and uh, more. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> something like that. It's already stronger. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay. You take a higher pitch. <laughs> okay. Moment. And go back, 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 back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. I feel a little bit silly, you know. <laughs> you know, I have my technique when I touch people to get the sounds out of them. Sort of, I, how do you say? I, 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 you use your hands to heal that which they uh, need to be healed. Let's say in this way. I use my hands and the movement with their body. I direct their body into the right resonance space because the body is the resonance ah. space for the voice you know and if they don't allow to enter into this space but by, because they think they have to think outside you have to you I do the yeah. sound like ah outside I know. You know? it's like you know ah. it's inside you know you must fill your whole body with the sound because otherwise it doesn't yeah, sound. Yeah, I get it. So the resonance space is actually coming inside of us and then feeling that space and then oh, something like that. Yeah, and go back all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm feeling so silly. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's just not. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, the voice, it's not really that it goes inside, but normally we are used to use the voice with too much air pressure. Uh -huh. And we sort of overrun the vocal cords. So with the idea to sing inside, you will allow just a little stream of air which is needed to come out and not like pang uh, oh, yeah, running. Yeah, yeah. The and then I can feel then, it then, here on there, the cords, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, otherwise uh, all the sound is only created here and reinforced here and this will break up the voice completely. Yeah. We need, there is the primary sound here, the primary vibrations, yes, uh -huh. but we need to transport them, transmit, trans, transmit, trans, trans, transmit, okay, I, sometimes I get confused with Italian, <laughs> um, this primary sound to the whole body structure. You know, yes, because yes. the bones vibrate, the yeah. chest vibrates, the whole yeah. bones up to the feet can vibrate. But if you sing or sound that puts the sound outside of you, yes, they yes. have only they reach only the head. They cannot reach okay. another yeah. thing. And when you lean back into your chair, yeah. uh, very backward, then there is the tendency of the everything in your body to go in the same direction. So okay. your throat, with some probability, I mean this is then to learn, uh, leans against the spine and the spine transmits the vibration and immediately the voice is much bigger without any effort, you know. Right. And this that is to is learn. so exciting, I just love that, you know. <laughs> so, Would you so like well, to? Yeah. Hmm? Go ahead. Would you like to try again? Just one other sound? Sure. First yes. we begin okay. here and then you go the way back, leaning back and pushing against the, the Okay. Seat. So which so how shall I do the new sound? The same? Just, or? just one, just one. And it, think about to uh, Pressing and pressing and pressing. This feels <laughs> good because it's like I feel like the the some like you actually hold your hands behind me. Good. And could you feel the vibrations in your chest? And in yeah, your I, f I felt it. Um, I felt it in uh, sort of in the rib cage on the back where mm -hmm. I'm leaning on the sh chair. They were sort of fibrillating type of thing. Wonderful. Wonderful. So this is to explore and to consolidate them, that you really, at the end, I mean, I now really know what I do, you know, yes. even if I explain it to another person, they might not understand my words. They understand that only when they have experienced yeah. the same thing, yeah. you know, and so it is a little bit of experiment, experiential work and everybody could try to work by themselves. But mm -hmm. be very, very careful because when you overload the vocal cords, then they might really, you know, yeah. when you don't do it right. And then normally I say to my students, I said to my students, the first half year, sing only in the lessons because I don't want that at home, then right. you overrun it and push right. and, you know, and then kill everything which we have begun to create. Anyway, okay, so, it's, so when, when we have learn this like the vibration in the rib cage and everything I could feel it that was very amazing good good so, good. so how do I take that to the relationship how do I take that into to uh, the relationship realm okay relationship work first of all is a work which have both parties have to do with themselves self knowing themselves and this is a big part of getting to know yourself because mm -hmm. you uh, get to know yourself not only physically because you discover parts of your body you have never felt yeah. muscles and also spaces you know the vibrations when you begin to feel the vibrations in your legs it is so exciting <laughs> you know <laughs> many many singers say when they really sing well and everything is 100% they, they, they say it is better than an orgasm <laughs> so wow <laughs> And I, I can I can say it is true because this is like 
your the whole body is in a flow. The whole body is present, completely present and in a flow. So by doing this work, you are getting to know yourself in this way. Also, you get to know your blocks. You know, yes. many people have fear of high notes because they say, I, I have not a high voice, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. They are only fearful. And with fear, you cannot neither sing nor speak. So uh, you get to know your emotional structure for yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> and you can learn to overcome these fears. How to do? Because a person who has no uh, solid voice technique when fears come, for instance, many speakers, you know, when they are on the stage, and then mm -hmm. fears comes and the voice goes away. And they don't know how to do. When you know how to do it, how it must feel in your body, how you can come back into your body and the voice gets liberated, then you have no problem on the stage. Right. When you don't know that, how to do, you are, you know, this wasn't me in the beginning of my singing. Sometimes the high notes came, sometimes it didn't. And it's such a fearful place to be, to, to do a performance. Speaking yeah, or singing is the same thing. But if you know, oh, I know what to do when this happens, it's no problem mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> you know? and, and then you sort of practice it, right? You practice it a lot, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's not all the time with the voice, because this is the other part. You practice often with your beliefs, with your convictions, because yeah. as long as people think that the voice has to go out of the mouth, yeah. and then when it's not loud enough, they push even more, and it gets even or lower or mm. squeezed. As long as they think this, they will never have a full voice. Right. You know, so you get to know also your mental structure, your beliefs in which you are swimming. And you need to change some of them because otherwise yeah. it's really, really difficult. <laughs> so what is the, the biggest uh, problem that you've experienced in your career with that people have with being authentic and living in a good relationship? That people, I didn't understand, that people... Yeah, what is the biggest problem? What is the first biggest problem that people have when they come to you? Oh, as a, as a voice a person, as a voice teacher, uh, voice as, as a therapist in general, when you see yeah. clients. Uh, as I said, it is not yet connected, but as a voice therapist, they often came, or they wanted to learn to sing, or they were so bad off with their voice, maybe they talk like this, or uh, mm -hmm. something like this in between, and they, they had taken all cortisone or whatever because they thought it is a, an illness, and still many people think when the voice doesn't work, this is an illness, but it, it's not. It's the wrong way how you use your voice. Mm -hmm. So I uh, educate them to use the voice in a different way, and then these problems go away, but it takes mm -hmm. some time. For yeah. sure, because you have used your whole life the voice in the wrong way, so you must allow at least some months <laughs> to inverse this process. Yeah. In so, when, yeah. When so, people, so when you work with them, that you you first work with their beliefs, basically, right? Is that right? I work on all these uh, reports, <laughs> departments, and more or less at the same time. A part of the session is physical, the part of the session is on beliefs, you know, mm -hmm. and so on. This is, um, it is combined, it's integrated, you know. Right. What, what I'm doing, I call it integral voice training. So it is not just, oh, something like this, no? It's not just uh, doing this chaos and things. It is much more complex. It's much more... Um, mm -hmm. How to say, seeing the whole person and working on the yeah. whole person. It's sort of a holistic way of seeing Absolutely. a person as a whole, yeah. Absolutely, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So and when people come for relationship um, problems, then I don't yet work with a voice. We just work on beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, on uh, shifting beliefs. Uh, renegotiating old agreements, mm -hmm. discovering toxic ties, mm -hmm. and so on, uh, codependency <laughs> patterns, and work on that with meditation work. Mm -hmm. It's not only 
like in psychotherapy, it's not only blah, 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 blah with the voice, uh, with, the, um, with the words, but it's also going in deeper subconscious uh, levels. Yeah. I will see. Uh, maybe on the next retreat we will have in, in spring, I might try to integrate these two things and I will yeah. see how it comes out. <laughs> so <laughs> next, at the end of next April, we will have a retreat for men and women here in Paradiso Integrale in Umbria, Italy. You can find out on the website. I think you can see the website on the uh, bottom. I hope yeah, so. I think you haven't in integrated your lower third there. Oh, I, I wrote in, in save. I, oh, I have to make it on. Oh, here. Can you now see it? Now we have you. Okay. So this is a website where you can find out also about the retreat and about the relationship work. Yeah. While, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is still there, the um, voice work is only a German site and it's called integral slash, no, how is it called, hyphen, uh, voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, for people who are uh, watching this video, do you have uh, something that they can start with, like an ebook or something like that, that you can provide for them to get started on finding their own voice? This I have not yet prepared because I'm so much in the relationship thing now. <laughs> I'm creating blog talk radio and videos and everything for the relationship part. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when I did uh, the voice work, I mainly was not yet inside the technology. I didn't have a good internet uh, um, access and I was not yet so... I mean, we can now speak on Google Plus. Yes, it's five, amazing. Six years ago. Nobody yeah. thought about it, you know. Yeah. So I never thought about creating ebooks. I have written a book which is in German and in Italian, but it's not in English. So uh, mm -hmm. about yeah. the technique, I think when I have set up all the relationship material, I will go there back and yeah. uh, create something. In the yeah. meantime, people could contact me and get some advice if they want to. So do you offer like an introduction session or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I always do a half yeah. an hour introduction yeah. session. And I have already done several times lessons on Skype. Yeah. But you know, it is there. My magic hand cannot be there. We must find... I found your hand. <laughs> ...a possibility to... to Touch you. <laughs> yeah. But with I felt your hands. I could visualize your hands actually being on the back. And when you guided me, I, I could see them, you know. I pushed back by my chair and, and there you were. It's amazing. Yeah. We can do many things by uh, or Google Hangout or Skype. Not all but many. Yeah. So the best thing is what to be to come have a holiday here, and in one week I get out an opera voice of almost everybody. Oh yes, <laughs> yes I did. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so the last question is: What would you like to tell somebody who has a problem with finding their authentic voice? What should they do? Like, what is the first step that you would advise them to do? You know, both the direct sense of authentic voice and also the metaphoric sense is mm -hmm. really listen into yourself. Mm -hmm. And whenever you talk and whatever voice expressions you have, feel it. Feel it in your body. Come mm -hmm. into your body. And this is not only for to create the physical voice, the real physical right. voice which is yours, mm -hmm. but also, you know, when you are transmitting something to other people. But you transmit it with this voice. Yeah. You are not you cannot feel your body. You are only here yeah. in this part, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's not credible. But when you are really when the whole thing what you have to say is transported by your whole body. Yes. Your emotions, whatever is present, people yes. can relate to that. This is yeah. by the way the big, big difference between singers who are very good technically. Yeah. And you sort of feel, oh, cool, it's good, pretty good. And other singers who maybe are not so perfect technically, but they are, oh, 
you know, when you're, you're right in there, yeah. You, you feel touched everywhere. And that's why they are inside of themselves and the body comes out of their deepest part, their most authentic part, you know. So your authenticity is grounded in the deep part of your body, in your whole body, let's say. But the center would be in the deep part of your, of your body. That is, listen, listen. I want to thank you, Heidi, for actually showing us some of these techniques because I had no idea really how, because I never had like a voice coach or anything. I took singing, singing le lessons, but she didn't talk about anything like what you talked I about know. here. I know. This is and not and this is so valuable. I'm really impressed that you also bring, you're going to bring your voice work with relationship work because in my opinion that's there is a link there that you could really help people with I really do hope so and I will work on it to get yeah. the integration you know I'm integralist at the end I will integrate everything <laughs> which is important <laughs> okay so is there anything else you would like to say before we end everybody has a wonderful voice when it has become his or her own voice. Yes. How Not wise. a voice they have adapted for commodity or for fear or for whatever, you know? Yeah. And they really are in themselves. The voice is wonderful and it's nice to listen to, you know? Yes. Yes. Well, this has been a very great pleasure, Heidi. And, um, I hope that we maybe we can do another interview later on another topic. And um, I wish everybody who listened to, to this that they also can look at what their own inner voice is, like Heidi has suggested here. Okay, so uh, this is it. Thank you so very much. Thank you too, Margarita. Okay, bye bye.